kind of curious about who is in the audience. So can you raise your hand if you currently own a business right now? Wow, that's impressive. And who's thinking about starting a business? And how many of you graduated college? Okay, you're all more qualified than I am. You're going to do well. <laughs> so um, this whole story, what I was going to tell you about is I didn't know what to talk about. So I'll tell you the story of uh, my journey to where we are today, a little bit where we are today, and kind of um, maybe there's some things to pick up along the way. Um, I guess before I start talking, I should show you what it is we do. So this is the product we make. It rolls up to the back of your truck. It fits in the hitcher seat where you hook up a trailer. Legs drop to the ground. A large clock from unfolds. With a push of a button, it's lowered to the ground. All electric powered. You can load overhead with stuff you have to load on. It lifts it up to the bed of your truck. You slide it in. Folds back up. And then you drive away. Thank you. And so um, basically it's something we sell to guys in the work truck industry. It started, geez, over three years ago, which I guess isn't that long compared to Ryan's story, but I'm only 23, so it's <laughs> like 20% of my life or something. Not quite, so you never graduated. Anyways, um, three years ago I was a fabricator, a welder, heavy equipment mechanic. I worked on a ranch down in Goleta. And a lot of the time found myself working alone, need to get heavy stuff into my truck kind of saw a need for something like this. Um, I was a mechanical engineering student at Cal Poly uh, in my junior year, came up with a concept, pursued it a little bit. I went to a program there called Innovation Quest. It was a competition we lost, but I kind of kept going with it. I uh, went back to the ranch for the summer and came back and took it on as a senior project, which would have been right here. And so this is back my senior year at Cal Poly. This is my current business partner, Marty Appentranger. Um, we started developing the project. So it started out as just an idea. I had a little bit of business potential, but it was more just kind of uh, something that was more interesting than going to class. We saw, uh, which if you're an engineer, engineering sucks. <laughs> like, trust me. <laughs> it's, uh, we, we now refer to engineering department as the money pit, because it's just like a never ending hole of blah. Anyways, um, so this is prototyping our senior year at Cal Poly. At the end of our senior year of college, we finished with basically a prototype which I think I have a picture of. And that's kind of where we ended up. And we saw some market potential, and we decided that we we're going to go into business. So we took together, I think we each had about $2,000 to our name. And that covered like the incorporation of the company. And so then we each took out a bunch of credit cards, and we started doing things. Uh, we worked with uh, like CIE in the hothouse at Cal Poly. Um, we started going down that road. And over the next couple months, we refined the product, and we went out and we started pre-selling the product. Um, this is one of like our very first sales demonstrations up in Fresno to a, an ag chemical company. Um, they ended up buying two units, or pre-ordering two units, because we, like I said, we had nothing. We had no money, we had no facility, we had kind of a product, which like at the time we thought it was a product. Looking back now, it was like laughable shit. I can't believe anyone bought. And, um, and that was only a year ago. And, um, don't tell any of the customers that's under warranty. Uh, and we started going out there, we started pre-selling units, we started moving, moving product just a little bit, and I mean, it was like, at the time we were scraping by, like, you, and so we pre-sold five units, it sold for $3,000 at that time, so you know, we got $15,000, our material cost is approximately half of that, and so we made a little bit of, or got a little bit of cash in, and said, all right, let's go build five. And we went out, and we went to go build five units, and we started, this was, a 10 foot by 10 foot shed we had in my backyard. These are the original fixture tables for the frames and platforms, which is funny, we still use these today in our new facility. And let's see, we have, this is Marty in my bedroom. We uh, put a drill press on my desk. And this lasted about three days before the neighbors behind us just were like calling the county, being a giant pain in the ass. And we're kind of like, oh shit. Like they kicked us out of our house basically and we're like trying to do stuff and <laughs> screw them. F them. <laughs> if we're in my shop, I'd say the, the full word. Um, and so we called Marty's parents, and they live uh, out in Bakersfield, and they have this dairy barn out there. They have a big dairy, and we basically called his mom one night, like a Thursday, and we're like, hey, can we move in? <laughs> and um, no shit, yeah, she's just like, sure, come on over. And so we loaded up our trucks, and we drove to Bakersfield, and I moved into his sister's room. She'd since moved out, and he moved back into his room. And uh, we started working in the barn, and it sucked. Like, 
I, it, you talk about business being hard work. I mean, like, to give you an idea how much it sucked, we were there for two days, and I was in Fresno picking up parts, and I get a call from his uncle, and he's like, hey, uh, Marty's in the hospital. I'm like, why is he there? He's like, oh, he lost his thumb. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And, uh, yeah, lo and behold, he got sucked in a grinder and took his thumb off. And so that kind of, like, put us behind the eight ball a little bit because <laughs> he could only work with one hand. And, uh, but, hey, he did it, you know? He was like, no shit, he's out there with, like, his, was one of his hands taped up and the other hand with the drill, just, like, drilling holes one-handed. And um, a couple of days later, it was, like, right before Christmas, I started getting sick and started getting really sick and ended up in the hospital for a couple of days because I got some bad milk off the dairy and got campylobacteriosis. And, uh, but we had a hard ship deadline in the first uh, five units, and it was just like, we'll suck it up and get back to work. And like we were working, shit, it was cold out there. If you've ever been to Bakersfield, it gets cold, cold, like quarter inch ice on the ground, cold. And there was no heater. I remember distinctly, the, we had a, a hard ship date of January 7th. The first five units had to be out. We had a truck schedule that was going to show up and take them away. And uh, it was like 7 p.m. on the 6th. And we still had like a days left to work to go. And we were eating dinner. And we are just like, you know, we're kind of behind. And we're like, yeah, we're kind of behind. <laughs> it's like, well. I guess we're not going to sleep, and yeah, we didn't sleep, worked all through the night, almost killed each other a couple times. <laughs> it's, you get a little delirious, like three in the morning, but yeah, we just trucked through the night, and it was like, if you've ever or had to deal with freight, you give freight companies, the, the trucking companies, a window. You say, okay, you can pick up the freight between noon and five, and like uh, like two days ago, like it's current current time, like we had all our shit ready, and like they didn't show up till like 5.30, and our guys were trying to go home at five, and that's just the way it goes, but if you're not ready, they will be there. 10 minutes before you're not ready. And that's how it was. It was like literally 11.55 and the truck drives by our driveway and we're still like putting bolts on, but we hit the deadline. And um, yeah, it sucked. It's stuff that's like kind of funny to talk about, but it stresses me out still. And, uh, <laughs> and about a month after that, it, we went to a uh, World Ag Expo. It's this big ag trade show in uh, Tulare, California. And this was kind of like a catalyst moment for the business. It went from like, our sales being word of mouth, one at a time. We went to a big trade show. This was our booth we had there. And people started to think we were a real company. And people started to like <laughs> buying stuff. Like they didn't know it was like just two kids in a dairy barn. They just like, wow. <laughs> um, things started going well. And so out of the show, you know, we started selling more units. And it was like, it went from ones and twos to like threes and fours and, you know, five a month. And um, out of that, we built up, we got our first building of our own. This was in Atascadero. It was a little thousand square foot box. Um, but it was huge, like just for us to have our own space and to, like, if, yeah, living with like my buddy's parents and like trying to maintain a life here and drive back and forth and like commuting to Bakersfield and it was just so much struggle. And like getting here was like remember the first night where it's like wow, and like didn't have his uncles like kicking us out when it was time to work on tractors and stuff. <laughs> and um, for the next couple months, it was a lot of stuff like this. It was like you load a couple lift gates in the truck and go sell them. And we started getting to bigger customers like um, Bay Area Rapid Transit started buying and started getting into guys who were, you know, we started shipping out of the state to Montana and New Hampshire and the product got some traction. And then we started getting more and more customers. This was a big rental company in the Bay Area. And this is like about August of last year. And this was about, you know, we started shipping out six at a time and the company kept growing around this point. You know, we had some guys who were Cal Poly alumni step forward and give us some help financially. Um, I, I think it's one of the things we didn't realize is how much money it takes to actually start a business. And it's insane how much money we spent last year. It just, it, I mean, we spent over a quarter million dollars last year. And that's just like, it doesn't include, we've made, I think right now I'm making $1,000 a month. So all my guys that work for me make more money than I do. And that's like, which is, it's just part of the game. But, um, yeah, and also living on $1,000 a month kind of sucks, but whatever. <laughs> American Express has been very good to me. Um, and this is about August of, uh, of last year. Um, coming to the end of this, and this is the new building we moved into. So it's uh, 4,000 square feet up in Atascadero. Um, came in there, renovated it, built an office. Um, we bought a bunch of tools, and that's one of the coolest things is about, um, you know, like I said, you don't make much money, and they work a lot of hours, and there's a lot of sacrifice. Like, I think when I started this company, uh, my dad and I didn't talk for like a year. He was like fucking pissed that I started a company. Like, it was not an okay thing to do. I turned down a job at Apple, and I was like, I'm going to do this. 
and like we still are kind of like this and um, you know you, you lose you, you give up a lot along the way but it's freaking sweet and I get to go in my shop and drive my forklift around and I've got like welders that I always wanted to own and I've got CNC machines and automatic band saws and it's like it's kind of mind-blowing like how fast it's come to it's it's one of those things you, you just get in the grind of you just keep trying to make right decisions every day and work hard and um, put the company first and put yourself first and then you know one day you look up you're like oh wow this is sweet when did this happen and um, it's kind of rewarding um, like I can't talk too much about it but we had some guys from a giant investment firm fly out this week and I spent the last four days with our financial guys going over our numbers and talking like big picture stuff and it's like wow this is a uh, it kind of makes the job worth it so kind of to wrap it up what I would say is um, if you're doing it or you're thinking about doing it or uh, it's a fun job it's a very hard job but if it's for you you just got to work hard and keep your head down and uh, keep at it and you know try to find some some enjoyment out of it so thank y'all for having me <laughs>